Point number three. Really dark. I'd say the darkest really of the dark. bunch. Agreed. Yeah. Also the meatiest of the bunch. Yeah. This is like au jus on the nose, like all over it. it smells pretty tasty. I a little like bit of strawberry. I kind of like it. I kind of like getting the roses is. again too. Yeah, there is definitely a floral note to this, like a heavy meaty note with with good cherries and good strawberries. Cherries, yeah, you nailed it with that. Mm. Faint heat. I'm getting a little. When I take a really deep breath, I'm getting a little bit of heat, but it's not distracting. It's not destructive. Do you get that or not? He's oblivious to. Me. He's oblivious to. Me. I, I drink 16% Shiraz, so yeah. Dark colors definitely carry through on the palette. You're like speechless. What, 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 what's this doing to you? Well, Whoa! Just, just the length on the uh, the mid palette for this. Like, so we talk about like when wine initially starts out for me is like right when it hits the tongue and I'm swishing it around. That's the start of the palette. And then as I'm sort of swallowing it and before it's gone is the length of the mid palette. And when I call it a long mid palate length is when you swallow it, but it still feels like it's right there on your tongue. Right. And this just holds for a good amount of time. Like I, that's why I was sitting there, kind of just like, wow, the acidity is rounding around my tongue. There's dark fruits leading into lighter fruits as the acidity kind of cleans everything out. There's it's not completely just taking everything away. It's the tans are full on here too. This isn't like Cabernet tans. That like rip your tongue apart, but they're full and like this this dries my mouth easily like like yeah three times as much as the other ones. This is yeah this is drying me out fully. It's giving me pucker. You've probably seen that little pucker. Like like little like pucker. my reaction there. Yeah. What this leads me to believe, you know, the fruit's good up front too. What this yeah. leads me to believe is like age this. I wouldn't want to touch this. I you know the next time I want to try this is in five years, and I think it's going to deliver well because the structure is strong now. It's full of acidity. It's got lots of tans, but they're not overwhelming. They're not dominant in regards to the flavor components. I can see them mellowing well with age, and I think that the fruit is good. Yeah, the fruit here is really good. But and, but the but structure, the structure is, is kick ass. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. But the structure is really full, and and it is a little dominant now. But I can see it really integrating well over time as it balances Sit out. Sit on these for a couple years before yeah. you drink them. A year at least, or decant the crap out of it. These were just opened. 30 minutes ago? Yeah, something like so, that, something like that. So, so take that as you will, but, you know, this this is delicious. I, 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 I dig the structure on it. I dig the length in the mid-palate. It's... I like the fruit. There's a depth to the blackberry flavors. Maybe I'm getting a little hint of red apple as well, which means that there's, like, a clarity to the fruit as well. Like, there's a purity to it that is really appealing. It's juicy. It's enjoyable. And juicy. the structure comes in and really, like... It's juicy without being over the top. Or not being too much, right? Yeah. Where people over extract or whatever. This is not over extracted. This is still fresh, but it's juicy and it's delicious. There's no question. 90 plus for me. Wow. So we are going to get some differences here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 88 points, and that's a bit of a stretch. That the, that's the optimistic side of me. But the point I want to make, I think it's like 88 points now. He can hate all he wants. Talk to me in three years. Talk to me in five years. This is going to be an entirely different wine. We'll give it a plus plus. Well, no, my, plus I, plus. I, yeah, and I, I don't do it right. So that's something I recently discovered too. That like Parker uses plus with the potential for aging. That's not what we do. We use the plus and the minus when we're having a hard time deciding between point ratings. Um, so what I like, I give, I give, I give plus for aging potential. Oh goodness. Yeah, I always okay. have. I'm, Okay. Wow. I've always given pluses. Wow. Points so we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do our introduction <laughs> show and talk about how we do the points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but the point I want to make is you know it's eighty eight points now. If you're gonna buy a bottle and drink it tonight, it's I'd say you, you know you can you can do better than this as as far as I'm concerned. If you're gonna buy a bottle to throw in the cellar and see where it goes, I think this will be fascinating in three to five years. Yeah. Um. So solid effort. I'm so happy with all of the wines we did. The fun part. Yeah. What's revealing the wine? So the fun part. The fun part. Finishing the talk. Yeah. Okay. So the first wine I scored. We aren't gonna remember. Let's not go there. Eighty-eight. Okay. Patty Green Estate. Um. Two thousand eight Ribbon Ridge. Pinot Noir. Uh. Retail. 
now of $750 should be around $35. Cool. I think this was $18 for a split. Uh, Ribbon Ridge is a tiny AVA in the Willamette Valley. It's really small. Patricia Green's a very well-respected producer. I've had their wines multiple times. I've always liked them. And this delivered, I thought, uh, at the split price, I don't know that I would have been excited, super excited about it paying $35 a bottle and getting 80 point wine. But that's just because we are Oregon we're elitists. We're, 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 we're spoiled at this point. So, okay. Metello, 2008. Um, Soros, or Sorry. I'm guessing Sorry. I'm not sure if that's French pronunciation or. I believe this is his high end bottling. Um, I'm going to have a little more. Yeah, yeah, it's it was tasty wine, no doubt. I think it was nineteen dollars for a split, so ah, around thirty-seven dollars okay. uh, a full bottle. And for those of you more inclined towards the brighter fruit, the red fruit, hibiscus, the raspberry flavors, this could be right up your alley. Yeah. All right, so two thousand eight Bergstrom Cumberland Reserve. Ah, dark and heavy. What Killed a shock! It. What a shock! Drank. It was so good. I I, I liked this wine quite a bit. Um, I remember tasting this during, it was one of the, I think it was the second or third wine. Second stop, it. second stop. And Burks was killing it lately. And I talked to uh, Kurt at Vinopolis, mm -hmm. and he actually said that uh, the winemaker at Bergstrom is trying to step away from doing the overdone wines he did before in the Willamette Valley. That's fascinating to hear. Like he, he said that, like, because it, it's always been a, a, no, a known thing amongst Oregon wine people is that Bergstrom produces a massive wine. Like they right. are the Purple Drank or Napa. Of one of them, Atlanta. right? One like, of them. Like, one of them. Yeah, yes. those guys in Beaufort, right? They're, they're the Drank of the Willamette Valley. Right. And that with 2008, he stepped back a little bit and made a more resolved for his style. Uh, or not resolved, but uh, what's the word I'm trying to use here? Just a a lighter style yeah. than his normal style. And I think this shows in that. This is awesome. And I think, I'm glad I purchased a whole bunch of this to age. I've purchased multiples of these. It's good play, ass. good play. You know, yeah. and that's not the only retailer I've heard. Mike at Renaissance Wines, one of my favorite retailers, said the same thing. He carried a bunch of it at his shop and said, like, the Oates, they were really doing something different and it delivers really well. And uh, now that I taste it and I know a little bit about how his, his palate goes, it makes a ton of sense. So, you know, Three solid wines, you know, not quite the the exceptional examples that we would we we would love to have, but uh, they've all got their strengths. They're all rock solid, I think, in their own way, and uh, yeah, I'm excited we got to try all of them. So, for a question of the day, you know, we're full on shifted to winter here. You know, you, you may say that this is kind of an autumn month, but it's been cold and rainy uh, as far as Portland's concerned. I know I grew up in the Midwest, right? So so cold is really a relative thing, but for us here, it's cold, right? It's gotten down to the 40s a couple of times. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's really weird how fast it shifted, too. Right. We had, literally, two weeks ago, we had mid-70s during the day and low 50s, mid-50s during the night. And now, all of a sudden, we're into high 50s during the day and, like, low 40s during the night. Like so, our question to you is, how crazy. cold is it where you live? What, what, what's, the, what's the recent low where you live? Give us some comments. Just, just drop it. Just drop it. It's easy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like two digits. You can right, make guys. that comment. Appreciate you watching. We'll uh, see you for the next show, which will be another or 08 Oregon Pinot show. More blind. Yep, more blind. Cheers. Later.